bad decisions from our side, you know, trusting people too much. The amount of filth and the smell, it probably hadn't been cleaned in five years. Again, it doesn't look safe, it doesn't look structurally sound at all. This is the best job I've done on a house at this price point, and a few records were broken. Welcome to the next flip. I completed this renovation in record time, and that's not the only record that got broken. I've got lots to share with you guys, including an interesting story about the previous owner, who actually features on this video. I'm Steve, and this is Flipping Johannesburg. So about a year ago, the previous owner, John, sold this house, but the other party breached the contract. So I helped him get out of this deal because he didn't want to sell to them anymore. But the problem was he owed them money and was unable to pay them back. I was interested in buying this house from John, so I structured a deal that was beneficial for both of us. With the main conditions being, one, that part of my purchase price would go towards paying back these people that John owed money to, and two, that I would help him find a smaller place to move to. Now finding a place that matched John's requirements was tough. He needed a townhouse that allows two pets and has a private garden, all for around 600,000 Rand. Now this is very rare to find, but after looking long and hard, I found only three properties on the market that matched this criteria. So there was a bit of back and forth, but eventually John made an offer on the one that he liked and it got accepted. I'm standing with John here, I've just purchased this house from him and it happened to be a win-win for both of us. He needed to sell for various reasons and for me, it's a nice fixer-upper for my next project. So John, I know you've been through a bit of a tough time recently. Tell us um, why you needed to sell this house exactly. Uh, basically, a lack of funds. Um, I paid for the house, uh, got a few tenants who didn't pay uh, correctly or didn't pay on time, didn't pay at all. And what would you say led to the, the state of disrepair of this house? Because the tenants were renting um, in the cottage, is that right? Cottage and three rooms. Uh, bad decisions from my side. You know, trusting people too much. That's basically what led to this. Okay. Yeah, and I'm glad I could help you, thank goodness, find a new place. Um, yeah. Thanks to my contacts in the industry and such. And I think it's going to be nice for you to move to something smaller. It's just you and your, your pets. Yeah. And um, you don't need all the space. And I yeah. think emotionally to move on from all of this is, is a good thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Steve was a total gentleman. Took me to look at a few places. He went out of his way to help. Congratulations on the new purchase and um, good Congratulations luck. Congratulations on your purchase. You. All the best. This is Project T. It's going to be an interesting flip because the budget's quite tight. So I've got to get creative in saving a bit of money. It's a small house, but there's so much value here. I'm very excited to take you guys through. Let's do it. So this is a 738 square meter stand. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a cottage or staff room, garden space in the front and back, and a single garage. So as we walk in, if we turn to the left, we've got the lounge slash TV room. Through this side leads to the kitchen. And if you look past the furniture and the mess, it's really not that bad. Okay, besides this stain on the carpet, it's a bit rough. So if we head back through this way, through these round archways, we head to the dining room. And you know, I really don't like these round archways. Simple solution is just squaring them off and it makes such a big difference. If you compare those round archways to the squared off look here, you can see what I mean. So this side, we've got another lounge or study area quite a few reception rooms for a compact house. So let's take a look. These tiles throughout are actually perfect. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. In this room, there is a bit of ceiling damage up top, which um, it's not too bad. But I mean, this mess, look at all these feathers. Oh, there's a dead, there's a dead bird there. Shucks. 
you know, and this natural light flows in through these bay windows and they're such a cool element, really nice design feature. So come this way, let's head past the dining through to this side, which is actually a guest room or fourth bedroom. But to get to it, you walk through this bathroom, which is in the passageway, and it doesn't actually have a toilet. It's very, very strange. But what I think is that because there's a door leading out here, I think this was always an out room. It was never joined to the main house. And when they knocked through to join it, they knocked through by the bathroom there, and then obviously just removed the toilet. So <laughs> it just needs to be fixed. I wouldn't even call this a built-in cupboard. It's more like a freestanding cupboard, but something we can work with. So the kitchen doesn't actually make the best use of the space. You can see the only top cupboards are these here on either side of the extractor and this side here. And then in terms of the cupboard doors, I'm going to have to replace them. As an example, if you look at these, the style at the bottom is different to the style at the top. So that doesn't work. I think the only thing that I might be able to work with is a backsplash tile. So let's have a look at the bedrooms. I might have to replace these tiles because they're a little bit patchy and cracked heading through to the bedroom here. So the room's quite small, but it's cozy. The carpets definitely have to go. And then the cupboards need a bit of work. This is the first bathroom. It is really small. I think I'm gonna keep the same layout, but obviously modernize everything and make sure everything's new. The bathrooms really have to be brand new. So if we head to the main bedroom, there's a section of tiling that's different to the passage tile. So it really looks patchy, doesn't look great at all. Then in the main bathroom, it's an exact replica of the first bathroom. But here, yeah, it's important that I put a new shower in. So we've at least got one bathroom with a shower. You know, it's really small. We can't both fit in here actually. And then the main bedroom, nice size. We've also got the bay windows here. Uh, once again, the cupboards need quite a bit of work. So all in all, you can see the house is really spacious and offers a lot of accommodation for the compact size. But let's head outside. <laughs> this door handle is very high, look. Unusually high. There's quite a few interesting patio structures here. I mean, look at this one. This is attached to the guest room with that funny toilet setup. And you can see it's very lopsided. It looks unsafe. And in my mind, you don't actually need a uh, covered patio here because the main entertainment area is this side. And this is a nice area to have a covered patio. But I don't know how I'll work with this existing structure because once again, it doesn't look safe. It doesn't look structurally sound at all. So I'm probably gonna end up just taking this down and building a new one. Uh, some nice speakers here, have been cable tied on. Yeah, so this is your garden. I think with it being clean and some new lawn, it can look really nice. We've got a fire pit here, which will also be a nice feature. And then yeah, there's actually a cottage. So if you look at the main house, which can be a four bedroom, you've got a cottage as well, or a staff room, a lot of accommodation. The cottage is quite spacious, but fairly basic. I'll be keeping the floor tiles here and generally a bit of a clean up and a new coat of paint. There's a little kitchenette and a decent sized bathroom. The house also features an extra length single garage with direct access to the house. This is the entrance of the house and have a look at these trees. They are huge and they haven't been maintained for so many years. Absolute monstrosity, so they need a lot of trimming. And then have a look at this section here. This can add a lot of value because it's an extra parking space. So the driveway is not that big, but this concrete's a bit unneat. Needs to be leveled off and neatened along the sides. And then here we need a, some decent steps going down here at least. Let's have a look at the front of the house. So it's a lovely little house and picture this cleaned up, neat, trees trimmed, house painted. It'll look really, really nice. And the plan is obviously to paint the entire house, but I think the roof is okay. It, it, it looks fine. Maybe it doesn't need to be painted, but very, very excited to get started. It's a lovely cottage style house. Let's get stuck in. 
John really let this place go to ruin. The amount of filth and the smell, it probably hadn't been cleaned in five years. Helping him out was a lot of work though for me because I had to do everything. He didn't lift a finger. I arranged the purchase of his new place. I packed all his old stuff. I paid for the moving costs. I even transported his dog. He really was appreciative though and it was nice for me to be able to give back, put him back on his feet and really make such an impact in his life. So the plumbers are here to the rescue. And we've got a blocked sewage line. So the tree roots have caused the blockage most likely. Oh, this is so rough. Smelling good. Smelling great. We managed to clear the blockage. You can see we've started trimming a bit. We're going to put electric fencing on the front side of the property here. But it was a bit overgrown, so we're clearing the top of the wall and then we can start with the electric fence. See the little section above there? Yeah. That's going to be like an extra parking space. Okay. So we're going to neaten up the cement work there, but then the tree's in the way. Okay. So it's a monstrosity. It's also getting dry on one side, eh? Which means it's coming to the end of its lifespan. Trimming obviously all the dead leaves. Yeah. Clearing all of this taking all the garden rubble. So there was some outside as well, this old bamboo, everything. Yeah. Neatening the beds. I think it's nice to have these three palms here. I mean, it can be the palm tree house. And, and check out, it's right up against the house. It's just too big. It's planted in the wrong place. Yeah. It's a pity, yeah. But I agree with you, those need to be trimmed yes. up there. Yes, yes. Then clive the main section of garden, yeah, this grass. I'm hoping we can just re revive this grass and not have to put new. What do you think? Let's rather look at the, the grass when everything has been cleared. Uh, 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 if I remember very well, you said this one, you're moving it away. I want to remove yes. the shed, yeah, because yes. just to increase the lawn space. Is that branch is going through the other tree? Through the other tree, and yeah. And out on the other side? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that before? I haven't seen this before. Cutting down the big conifer. Pretty obvious which house on the street's doing renovations. Crazy. All that garden rubble's come from clearing this side, the front side. Looking better. Okay, so it's this patio structure here. I think we can use some elements here, mainly the roof. Yeah, the but roof treatings you can. It's it's too big this thing. And I was thinking now, let's say it starts from about here and goes this way. Okay. Because it's also giving a bit of shade into the kitchen yeah. Yeah, you're not getting enough natural light going in. Exactly, so from here basically all the way to there. Okay. Um, and then what I'm thinking is to go with the steel. I yeah. mean on the, on the uprights. The, the structure with these poles, I would say take them off yeah. and go steel. Steel uprights. Steel uprights. I don't know if you do the lip channel. Lip channel. Is it? Best. And then you can use the IBRs. We use the existing yeah, and then it looks fine. There's one or two holes here. No, there, that's fine. Would you say the steel lip channels is the most cost effective? Most cost effective uh, in terms of longevity, maintenance. This is high maintenance. You do the same with the gutter. It doesn't have to be hidden. It doesn't actually, have to be hidden. We can put it here. Yeah, we can put it on the outside, which is far quicker and easier and let it match the, the existing gutters on the building. I forgot to mention that structure's coming down. So you've got plenty so of it there as well. Plenty of take the best. And it looks like there's some downpipe sitting on top there. Yeah. We can, yeah, we can check in what we can salvage. Yes. Basically, <clears throat> carcasses need to stay. I, I okay. initially thought about um, changing layout, yeah. but because of budget, I think we keep the layout. And mm -hmm. if you look there, it's really fine. It just needs a bit of a not cleaner. Too, it's not as bad as it's it looks on the bad. outside. Mm. I mean, we've worked with worse before. Yeah. Look, because sometimes mm. you just need to change the rails or some, some new components. Yes, you know? we need to put new doors. Mm -hmm. and the reason is, <laughs> these look at, these are different to these. And different yeah. Tires and yeah, I mean, even painting, the, the, they look a little bit shot as well. And if you look this side, check out the, the splashback hasn't gone all the way up. Yeah. The floor tiles are going. Okay. to be changed. 
and then I want to just do a fe feature splash back here. Guys, I've started with the kitchen carcass. Taking the doors off and they're just uh, doing some repair work on the carcasses. As you can see, the layout's exactly the exactly same as the other same. bathroom, but here we need a shower because obviously have to have a shower and I think it makes more sense in the main bathroom. Now, I've been looking at ideas on layout and to me, I first thought of the shower screen, you know, just the glass, mm. but access is a bit of an issue. Um, yeah, because of the basin. What I thought, just a normal enclosure in this corner. Corner. Yeah. The issue is the... Standard I mean, 900 takes us to there. Comes out pretty far. Mm. Unless so, you do a rounded. That's exactly what I was going to say next. But then that's going to cut down on the space of the shower. I think that rounded enclosure mm. makes the most sense, yeah. So we're sorting out the big cracks here on this side. good progress with the painting. Painting looks good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. You like the colour? Yeah, yeah. This is one coat, eh? Nice, nice. Yeah, yes, one coat. Kitchen's coming along. Almost ready to put the tops on and the doors. Tyler is moving very quickly. We've already tiled all three bedrooms basically and the passage. And now they're moving to tile the bathroom. Let's see how the new patio is looking. The project ran smoothly because I planned it very well. One of the challenges I did encounter though were the contractors and workers being quite busy on other jobs and it's definitely this time of the year before closing up for December, guys get very busy. The Paul, my kitchen guy, had a gap in his schedule to come and do the kitchen but at this stage we were still busy with some of the build work so we ended up having a completed kitchen while we were still chopping and chasing and generating dust around it. So it was a bit stressful and I was worried it was going to get damaged, but it was all fine in the end. And it actually had the effect of speeding us up in other areas. And then some other contractors actually let me down due to other jobs, but I overcame this by always having a backup guy in case, which meant there were no delays, thank goodness. In terms of the numbers, I knew from the beginning that the margins were tighter on this flip. It's a smaller house, so it does have some inherent limitations, which put a ceiling on the sales price that can be obtained. Some of these are the stand size is compact, it doesn't have a pool, and it's got a single garage. However, the flip side of this is that the buyer gets really great value at this lower price point. And I know this part of the area very well. I flipped a house on the street before, so I had those sales numbers in mind during this flip, knowing that I needed to keep the budget in check. And the discipline paid off because I actually didn't exceed budget on this flip.
Let's look at a breakdown of the renovation costs, from the most expensive category to the least expensive. The painting material and labour is the most expensive fix-up item. Kitchen and bathrooms are next on the list and you could argue that they are the most important areas to spend on. The extensive garden cleanup explains the 20,000 Rand spend. Next is electrics and plumbing, very crucial areas to sort out. Then the new covered patio, floor tiling, construction and build work and tools and miscellaneous. Interestingly, the first 10 categories make up 77% of the entire spend. Here are the other categories bringing the total cost of the renovation to just over 305,000 Rand. Here it is, Project T, completed in record time. And it is really a dramatic before and after house flip. Here it is, a completely new and renovated Project T. This TV room has been staged so functionally and cleverly, it actually makes the room look a lot bigger. Such a breath of fresh air from before, no more stained carpets and filth. We head through to the dining room, you'll see uh, this is where the round archways were and we squared them off. Neatened the look a lot. Such an inexpensive and simple renovation to do to square off the arches it has that modernizing effect. Let's take you through the spacious formal lounge. We fixed the broken ceiling from before and we actually kept these old floor tiles. An interesting thing is during the renovation we had some water seeping through the skirting at the bottom there during some rains so we fixed that and that is one benefit of renovating during the rainy season so you remember there was a bathroom here without a toilet so the hard decision was do I keep this as a bathroom or do I get rid of it entirely so obviously you can't have a bathroom in the passageway leading to a bedroom and building a bathroom elsewhere would cost too much when it's not actually necessary because the house already has two bathrooms so this would be an additional one. So the final decision was to get rid of this as a bathroom and keep it as a passage but then I added this linen cupboard here to keep the space nice and functional. And there is lots of value here with this as a guest room, fourth bedroom or study. It's nice and neat, we fixed up the cupboards, it's got its own entrance and a nice surprise when we pulled up the carpets, there was this tile underneath, so it saved me a lot of money, didn't have to retile. I didn't think the kitchen would turn out this amazing. A big contributor is this new backsplash tile, because I was going to keep the old one, but I'm so glad that I didn't. And then in terms of the layout, it stayed the same. We worked with the existing carcasses, but we put new doors. You can see this nice wood grain finish on the doors. And then new Rustenburg granite tops, brand new appliances. And over this side, we added a new water point so you can run your dishwasher and washing machine. So the floor tiles from the kitchen this way are all new and we ran them into the bedrooms for that seamless look. Those old carpets were an absolute no-go and they were just a collection of filth. And then in the bedrooms, we neatened up all the built-in cupboards, fixed them, and 
and repainted everywhere obviously. So this is the first bathroom. Looks nice and fresh, eh? The layout stayed the same, but everything's new. And then the old bath was a cast iron bath, so they are very solid and nice to keep if you can, but it was chipped in quite a few places, so the cost and mission of fixing it exceeded that of just putting a new bath in. Let's head to the main bathroom. You can see it looks even fresher. I changed the layout here and we added a shower, a nice compact round shower design. And this white towel is lovely. If you go close, you can see it's got a little pattern to it. So I'm really happy with my design choices for the bathrooms. And here's your main bedroom. Wow, these blue accents are really cool. I love them. It gives you that Mykonos grease feeling. Vanessa, you've done it again with the staging. Wow. And you know, this is the first time I've staged a lower value, smaller house like this, but it's making me realize how important it is. And I really want to stage on every flip. So let's take a look outside. You can see we removed this funny lopsided structure that was joined to the guest room. It was really not necessary and it made the space feel quite cluttered. The big change is this side where we took down the old covered patio and we built a new smaller one and the span ends here whereas the old one, I don't know if you remember, went over this window blocking in a lot of the natural light from the kitchen. What was really really amazing with this build is that we were able to reuse a lot of the materials. So this IBR roof sheeting is from the old um, roof and then these steel lip channels that run inside we found the exact number that we needed just lying around on site. So thanks to reusing materials we saved about 8,000 Rand on this build. Amazing. So this paving never looked great before. It was worn, it had a washed out terracotta colour, there was a large crack running through the middle and one of my contractors actually suggested that we seal the crack and actually paint the paving this, this grey. And I'm so glad we did because something this simple has such a big impact. Looks great. So previously this section at the back of the patio here wasn't actually covered. In essence it was a big hole in the ground and it's where these toilet waste pipes um, link up to the drain below and it goes down to ground level. But what we did is we needed to cover it because you don't want to be chilling on the patio and then fall back into a hole. So we covered it with timber pieces that are supported by some cleats below and it looks quite seamless now because we painted the same color as the pavers and if need be you can actually remove um, these pieces to get down to the drain. Let's say if you've got a block drain for instance and then you put the pieces back. So, neat little solution. Let's look at the garden. We've put some new lawn, um, nice and green. And there was an old shed here, which we got rid of because it was taking up a lot of the lawn space. And these wooden structures are quite neat. It's a nice, simple, cost-effective solution to create a bit more privacy, because that wall with the neighbor is quite low, that side. And overall, it's quite a dramatic before and after. You can see the cottage looks a lot cleaner. New paint has a big effect. It was lacking a clothing cupboard, so we added one. And generally, we didn't do a lot of renovating for budget purposes, but it's neat and the new owner has many use cases for this space. So you'll remember there was a big conifer tree here, but it was in the way of us sorting out this landing area and what we did to fix it is we built a wall along the front and along the back side so that we could fill it and level it off, make it a bit neater. And then we built some nice steps going down. So it's nice and presentable in front of the house. Oh, this grass is all new. And you can see on the house, we painted everything except the roof and we went for that charcoal look on the external doors and window frames. But I mean, this contrast from before, it was 
big dumping ground, now it's this green lushness and it's been realised to its full potential. When deciding what to price this house at, my starting point for comparatives was a house I'd flipped before in the street. Very similar house to this, but it had a few pros. Those being it had a double garage, this has a single garage, a bit more parking space, and it had a pool. But it also had a few cons. It was a three bedroom house, this has four bedrooms. The entertainment area was not as nice as this, and it didn't have a cottage. So I had to factor all these in when pricing this. Now that sold for 1.56 million in 2019, two years ago. So already an upwards adjustment needed to be made on that price. Another thing that was important was I looked at what houses are on the market for in the area. And then importantly, the most recent sales prices that were achieved in this area. So you can see a lot of analysis goes into this. And at the same time, I had to keep in mind my margins and the fact that the house needs to sell quick. So you can see it's a dynamic approach as well. This is the best job I've done on a house at this price point, and a few records were broken. Firstly, this is the quickest I've renovated a house. I had one week of planning and then four weeks of work until completion. We pushed really hard. Then with the listing, I wanted to put the house on the market at a competitive 1.75 million. However, after consulting with the property pro, Arthur Barron, he suggested we go to market at 1.8 million. And so that's what we did. Then came the other record. One day after listing the property, we received an offer of the full asking price, 1.8 million. I actually still cannot believe it. This is a first. In addition to that, we also received five other full asking price offers. Absolutely crazy. I guess there's so much demand for brand new houses and there's not a lot of them. The market is competitive at the moment and the interest rates are at an all-time low. So all of this lends itself to a record-breaking sale. I purchased the house for 930,000 Rand. There were some transfer and finance costs involved. Renovation costs came to just over 300,000 Rand, which brought the total cost to just under 1.3 million Rand. In one day, the property sold for 1.8 million Rand, and after the sales costs, the net profit figure came to 426,675 Rand. Now the time period from cash outflow for the purchase and cash inflow from the sale was four months. Therefore, this flip produced an annualized return on investment of 100%. These figures are in South African rands. Here are the figures in US dollars for those that are interested. If you haven't already, make sure you click above to watch the Project H house flip, where the profit was double this one, and had to deal with big problems like theft. So congratulations on a new purchase. You must be really, really excited. And I mean, you were quick out the gates. I think you, you viewed the day we, we listed and then the next day your, your offer came in. So tell us, um, how, how did you find out about the house so quickly? Okay, so I'll be 100% honest with the help of Arthur Barron, obviously. I have a family member working there and we coordinated and viewed the property same day. We did the offer same day. and. We prayed from there <laughs> and everything kind of went the way we wanted it to go because honestly I fell in love. And how did you feel when other offers came in and there was a lot of other interest? Did you think you were going to lose the place? Yes, I did actually. <laughs> the, there were plans set in place from the estates agent already obviously to have an open house and, and that all went ahead. So here's me thinking as a first time buyer, you know, someone's going to fall in love like I did and say like I'll offer you like three bar and then what am I going to do? But yes, to answer your question, I was a bit scared of that part, okay. but here we are. So awesome. nothing bad happened. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. And, and what stood out for you? Like what really sold it for you? In all honesty, I would say the outside, the lights and the bay windows and the beautiful palm trees, everything was just perfect. And then when you came in the house, I was like, I don't remember what I loved outside because you come in here <laughs> You know, like new kitchen, new bathrooms, that's probably the most important because 
you know, cost-wise, buying a property and having to redo things like that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool for me to get that feedback because I often don't. Being a renovator, I don't get to see what people really, really enjoyed, you know. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and then are there any changes you would make? Obviously it's newly renovated, but what would you add or, or, or change? So back to bay windows, obviously. <laughs> that's sort of the perfect area to add seating and storage and that's you know, a good pillows. Idea. And I'm, I'm the decorative type of person that would want those kinds of things. So yes, that's probably the only thing I would add. Other than that, I think I would be a bit stupid to want to add anything because there's nothing more to add. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. And then, yeah, lastly, on the house, so it's three bedrooms, there's a guest room and a cottage. What, will you be using all these rooms? Will your family be with you? So, my son and I will be moving into this house alone, believe it or not. And the cottage will generate an income. So we'll be wow. renting it on an Airbnb basis. That's so cool to hear. Airbnb is probably the most noteworthy thing about this house and for a first time buyer. It's, it's amazing for me that I got to obviously create a house that is your dream house. Yes. So it's really fulfilling for me. So congratulations again Thank you. And, and all the best. And the same to you. I mean, you have to also note that you need to know what you do. You know, what you're doing, the capabilities of renovating a house because you did this as part of your job. You do this for a living, yeah. but in, in essence, all the money that's gone in, all the effort, all the hard work literally has made somebody's dream come true. And I don't wow. think you always go into a project thinking that because as long as it comes out better than you got it, your job's done. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of making people realize their dreams, knowing what you want, everything's perfect. I think it's, it's a real massive gift on your part. So wow. I need to thank you as well. Jeez, you're welcome, giving me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. Like making an impact is, I mean, making a difference is amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's what is fulfilling for, you know, doing what I do. So yeah. thank you. The sales transfer takes a few months. So we carry on with maintenance right up until ownership is transferred. Now, usually it's small things like garden service, cleaning, general maintenance, but it also gives us time to iron out any other issues that may crop up. So in this case, there's a few areas of damp in the house and there has been a lot of rain in Johannesburg recently. So in this formal lounge, if you look up here, there's a bit of moisture that's come through the wall here. It's not a lot, but it is noticeable and it's a similar thing down at the skirting here. And then in the kitchen, on the ceiling, there's a bigger leak there which needs to be sorted out. So let's get the professional's assessment of this damp here. So Praga, what do you think this is? Okay, what do you think? from from what we see on the outside, it looks like the water is just seeping through the rafter join on the plaster. So it's not a major leak. We just need a little bit of sealing between the rafter and the plaster and should eliminate that problem. Good. Same with the bottom. It's a very slow seep, but it just needs a little bit of sealer at the bottom. Cool. Well, let's go have a look outside, see what it looks like from, yeah. from that side. Okay, if you look at that point, it's where the water runoff from your roof valley comes down. So the fact that it's been running there quite often sort of, you know, uh, damaged the timber a little bit, but not too bad, but it just needs to be sealed off. That's the point where it could be soaking in. If you look at there, you just probably need to put a little bit of sealer to seal that little gap to prevent the water from soaking in. So, uh, Prago, what do you think this okay. most likely is? Most likely, it could be from a roof tile, maybe a cracked roof tile, or roof tile that moved off with the heavy winds we've had recently. Uh, but we'll assess it. We'll get on the roof and see exactly what's going on and uh, take it from there. Okay, and then we'll also have a look in the ceiling. Ceiling to, to see, see if there's any other, other damage. faults okay. or damages that we can see. So we're in the roof and we're having a look just above this bit of damp in the kitchen. You can see the damp spot there. So does it look like a leaking pipe? There we go. It's a leaking oh, pipe. The drip. Very small leak. So to fix the problem, you can see we've sealed around this rafter where the gap was, where the moisture was coming in. So yeah, we've actually chopped quite deep. We've sealed off with some damp seal. And now we're gonna fill again with concrete so that the damp will be a thing of the past. So you can see we've sorted out the problem and we've sealed up around this rafter. On the inside, we did a light sand on the damp areas. We then applied damp seal 
and then the finishing coat. And in the kitchen, we sorted out the leaking pipe, so the damp is a thing of the past. My philosophy is doing things properly and taking pride in your work, otherwise, what's the point? I want to say a big thank you to the guys on the ground that actually did this amazing work. My team is the best. This was such an epic flip, I enjoyed every minute of it. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel Flipping Johannesburg and follow me on social media. And stay tuned because the next one's coming very soon. Thank you.